Today we're going to make a pot roast and what you do, we're going to prep it, put it in a crock pot and eight hours later or ten hours later when you come home you could throw your preps in which would be carrots and some potatoes that you've canned yourself, a few extra spices and you'll have a wonderful meal within 10-15 minutes from the time you get home. First you take a nice pot roast. Then you use a nice steak rub or any kind of spices you want, even just salt and pepper. And you sprinkle it on your pot roast. All right. Then you take oil. I'm just taking some simple oil. I put it in my pan because I want to brown it up. Brown it up on both sides. Not wrong one, I always do that. Okay. Again, we all know I do what works, not necessarily what other people tell me to do. Alright, then I'm going to sprinkle it on the other side. I used to watch that guy Emro and he says, always make your meat happy. I always thought that was a pretty funny statement. What you want to do is just sear your meat. That's all. Just sear it. And we're going to turn it over. We're just browning it. So let's just clear the meat. Yeah. See, this is a little crusty. That's all. You're searing it. Uh, what the purpose is, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know. It's just this is the way my mom used to do it, and this is the way I do it. Now, you can take it at this point. Put some uh, beef bouillon in here some water, put it in the oven at 350 if you're going to be home, it'll be ready in about an hour and a half. You want this meat to just fall off the bone. That's the way we do it, just fall off the bone. But we're going to cook it in a crock pot because when I go to school, I don't have a lot of time. I come home, I'm hungry, or if Ted comes home first, he's hungry. So what we're going to do is make it the way you need to make it if you're going to be gone all day. Okay, and now you see that it's nice and brown. I'm just going to lift it up. Well, you know what? I better, I don't like having a lot of grease running around. So, okay, we're going to lift it up. And we're going to put it in our crock pot. Now, you're going to notice that my crock pot is a little bit smaller than this beef. And that's okay. Don't worry about it. That's all right. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to take a big glass of water. See that? And I'm going to pour it into my meat. The reason why is the water is going to make it taste real good. Plus, you're going to have a nice gravy later. Now, I know some people would have a stroke if they saw this. But you know what? It works for us. And this is going to be a wonderful gravy. You'll see. And then later on, when I come home, I'll just add my potatoes and carrots to this. So for right now, that's what you do. Then you get yourself some beef bouillon, some type of beef bouillon. Or if you have been lucky enough to can up beef broth, I can't ever seem to keep it around here. I'm going to have to start hiding it in my preps because um, my kids and my husband will take beef broth and use it with, uh... okay, one of the things you might want to do is use a few of your dehydrated preps. Like in my case, I don't want to chop onions first thing in the morning and smell like an onion all day. So I'll use some chopped onions. And I put maybe a handful in there. It's going to taste just fine. I'm going to take some of my uh, mushrooms and peppers that are dehydrated. Um, not mushrooms, I apologize. Peppers. My red, yellow, and green peppers. I love these. And I'm going to put oh, another handful in there. This is for flavor. And then, of course, we can never forget Mr. Garlic. So, I, don't, I very seldom, very seldom cook anything without garlic. And I put maybe a couple teaspoons in there and then I'm going to take my pot roast settle it back down and put the lid on it my improvised lids. And I wanted also to show you 
what I'm going to use later. I'm going to take my corn from 2011. I'm going to take my carrots from 2010. And I'm going to take my potatoes that I just canned this year. In this month, actually. And this is what I'm going to add to my Yankee Pot Roast later. But I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. As preppers, we sometimes have to improvise. Can't find my lid, of course. Um, so I used aluminum foil. Now, aluminum foil is one of the preppers' best friends. There's a million things to do with it. Today, what I'm doing with it is making myself a lid. Now, I want you to know you can make this kind of pot roast in a Dutch oven. You can make it uh, <clears throat> in the solar cooker because the solar cooker or my solar oven, I've noticed, cooks exactly like the slow cooker. So, uh, but today we have an overcast, so I'm not going to do it that way. Um, so here it is. Eight hours later, we'll be back. Okay, it's been about eight hours. Let's take a peeky and see what it looks like. Oh, Lord God, that looks good. Don't it, Ted? Look at that. You see how it's just falling off the bones? And look at all the beautiful rehydrated vegetables. Whoa, almost too much falling off the bones. Hold on. Okay, let's get this out. Oh, this is falling off the bone tender. See that? Look at that. That's pot roast. How's it smell, Ted? It smells very good. <laughs> I think so. Alright, gotta open up our potato. Jeez, I can't get it open. So we're gonna open up our carrots. We like a lot of carrots in our Yankee pot roast. Okay. In here. All right. You see all them beautiful rehydrated vegetables? Now what I'm going to do is take my carrots that I had uh, canned in 2010. And look at these beautiful potatoes. They're brand new, so I didn't even have to take the skins off, which makes it all that much better. See that? We're going to let that get hot. It's going to take about 10 minutes. Then what I'm going to do is take this out. I'm going to make a little gravy. We're going to pour it on that beautiful pot roast. After about 10 minutes and your vegetables are nice and hot, and they are nice and hot as you can see it's smoking, what we're going to do is transfer the vegetables to a plate. All those nice peppers and all those dehydrated onions. Never underestimate the power of your dehydrated vegetables. And there's all the vegetables on the plate. And we have our where we cook the beef and also all the vegetables. Nothing's in there. There might be a few onions, a few green pepper, but that's just fine. Just leave it. We're going to take some flour, about a third of a pint. I'm going to put hot water in it. What I'm going to do is shake up the jar real good. We're going to blend all that flour in with the hot water. This just goes so fast. You'll see. If you make this and you come home, you take out your pot roast and you take out your vegetables, it's like 10 minutes and it's over. So. Then I take a strainer, because I don't want any lumps and bumps in my gravy. And I just pour it in like that. Alright, that's going to be in there. While that's doing that, I just stir it up. This is going to make a great gravy, you'll see. And the longer it cooks, the thicker it's going to get. Now you can go ahead and take your time if you want to. I, I don't know how you would do that, but you could skim off the fat if that's what you choose to do. And that's okay, but you know what, we're old school here. And I always think of uh, SHTF, are you really going to be able to have a refrigerator to put it in? And 
Do you eat a bunch of gravy, or is it just like a flavor? To us, we just drizzle the gravy on. We don't have our vegetables swimming in it. And uh, look how that's thickening up. Very nice. Little bits of pepper. Little bits of... Uh, ooh. Piggy boo. Little bits of pepper. Little bits of onion. It's getting nice and thick. And we'll set it up. And there's dinner.